Hello. In this video, we're going to go through your virtual lab on carbon transfer through snails in Elodia. So, um, first off, you can open up this document um, in your desktop, or you can open up in your browser. So, if you um, have op uh, downloaded this, you can upload it to your Microsoft 365 account. And that would be here. And if you click on this, it will open it up in your browser. And it'll look like this. It'll be slightly different. The explanation of the background will be down here and the picture will be here. But you will be able to type into all the fields um, in your browser. And then you'll be able to share that with me in Canvas. So let's get started on this lab. You are setting up a snail aquarium at home. Your aquarium kit contains a bag of snail eggs on an Elodia plant. The instructions say to pour the contents, including the Elodia, into the aquarium. But you're not sure why you need the Elodia. Why might Elodia plants be important in maintaining a healthy ecosystem? In this investigation, you will use snails and Elodia to explore a biological system. You will form a hypothesis about the relationship between snails and Elodia and then design an experiment to test your hypothesis. So let's read the background on this. Um, all organisms are dependent on a healthy carbon dioxide oxygen balance. Photosynthesis and cellular respiration are key processes in maintaining this balance. Plants, through the process of photosynthesis, use energy absorbed from sunlight water and carbon dioxide to produce carbohydrates and oxygen. Animals and plants through the process of cellular respiration use oxygen and sugars to produce carbon dioxide, water, and energy needed to maintain life. So let's look at a picture of this. So a picture of this would look like this. We have animals and they're producing carbon dioxide. And we have plants and they are sucking in carbon dioxide and they're producing oxygen. So if we look at our two processes, you might remember this from um, assignment six, photosynthesis is a process where carbon dioxide and water and light are taken in by, by a plant. So they take in carbon dioxide, they take in water, and they take in sunlight, and they produce glucose and oxygen. So here's the oxygen coming out and they produce glucose, which is their leaves. Respiration is the process where animals, they eat the plants or the glucose made by the plants. They breathe in oxygen, which is what we're not showing here. And they produce carbon dioxide through cellular respiration. They pee out water and then they um, store this as ATP. All right, so they actually take the energy from the glucose and they store it in a molecule called ATP. All right, so that is the basic process. In your lab, we need to write a purpose for this. And so um, the purpose of this is to determine how carbon dioxide cycles through a biological system. So that's what we're going to do, investigate, how carbon dioxide cycles through a biological system. So let's go ahead and get started on this. Explore the lab to learn what is available for your investigation. You must click on each item in the checklist. Once you are ready to move on, click Procedure. So what you are going to do is we're going to skip the hypothesis for a second, and we're going to go right to your materials list, which is right here. And as I click on the materials, you're just going to type them into your materials list. So I'll do the first one for you, and then you can do the rest on your own as I click through. So, Beaker of Bromothymol Blue, BTB, solution. Bromothymol Blue, BTB, 
is a chemical indicator used to test for the presence of carbon dioxide. This BTB is green because there is already some carbon dioxide in the solution. Okay, so what you'll do is on your materials list, you'll just type in whatever it is. In this case, the first thing is a beaker of bromothymol blue, and it is already green because there is carbon dioxide in the solution already, and we'll need that information later. Grow light. Use the grow light to simulate light conditions. If you choose to leave your experiment in light conditions, you must expose the organisms to a constant light source. So you go ahead and type in grow light. Pond snails. Pond snails have lungs. They can breathe in or out of the water. So pond snails have lungs and they're breathing in some kind of gas. Elodia. Elodia is an aquatic plant. You'll put down Elodia, which is an aquatic plant. Color key. Use the key to determine the level of carbon dioxide in a solution. Put down the color key and we'll need this. Notice that it's green right now, which means it has medium carbon dioxide in it. And if it had none, it would be blue. And if it had a lot of carbon dioxide, it would be yellow. Test tubes. Use the test tubes to hold the snails and Elodia. Okay, they... Test tube rack cover. Use the test tube rack cover to simulate dark conditions. And you do not need to put in the test tube rack cover because we're not going to use dark conditions, so don't put that one in. That's why there's only seven things instead of eight. Carbon dioxide oxygen cycle poster. Use this diagram to help you write your hypothesis. Assume the cycle is true for snails and elodia. All right, and that includes our seven items. Again, you do not need this test tube rack cover. All right, so now that we have our items down, we're going to go ahead and we are going to um, click on procedure. Open the lab notebook and write a hypothesis to explain how carbon dioxide cycles in aquarium water through snails and elodia. Review the background information or the poster if you need help with your hypothesis. Once you have written your hypothesis, click the arrow to advance to step two. So I'm going to go ahead and open our lab notebook. And it says my hypothesis is, but we haven't written it yet. So we open our lab notebook and we're going to write down hypothesis, explain how carbon dioxide cycles in the aquarium through snails and LED. So what you have to decide is, for your hypothesis, is who is making the carbon dioxide and who is taking the carbon dioxide in. So based on our background knowledge that we saw, you can say that the snail is making the carbon dioxide, or you can say that the plant is making the carbon dioxide, and you would put that here. The plant is making carbon dioxide, and the snail is taking the carbon dioxide in. Okay, so this may not be a correct hypothesis. I would not use mine. We will find out what the correct hypothesis is when we finish this lab. But so once you have that done, then we're going to go ahead and go on to our next step, which is the experiment. So now we have my hypothesis here. So now we're going to go ahead and start writing down the dependent and independent variables. So in your lab, you've just recorded your hypothesis right here, so make sure you record that there. So now we're getting down to our dependent variable. So the dependent variable is given to us already, so all we have to do is copy that in. And it is right here. The dependent variable is the level of carbon dioxide 
in the test tubes. Okay, so um, we're looking at the level of carbon dioxide, and that is what um, our dependent variable is. So the operational definition then would be determine the occupational definition for the dependent variable. How will you measure the dependent variable? We're going to measure it by looking for a color change in the bromothymol blue. So that would be what would go here and here. So you're not going to be typing this in, but I have to. Uh, color change in the BTB. So that's what you would write right here. And I'm not going to write that for you. You can hopefully you can see it from my thing. The independent variable then is identify the independent variable, decide which condition you will test the number of snails in the test tube, the number of LEDA, and the amount of light. And what we're doing is we're determining the independent variable by the number of snails in the. So we're going to type this in the. of snails is going to be our independent variable. So that's what's going to change in our experiment, the number of snails. Everything else will stay the same except for the number of snails. So the control so the control in this case is um, a test tube with no snails or LEDA. Only bromothymol blue in the test tube. So that'll be our control. And we have to have that to see that the bromothymol blue will not turn color on its own for some reason. So we have to make sure that the things that are in the test tube are causing the bromothymol blue to turn color and it's just not turning color on its own and that will be asked later so um, remember that okay so that's what you type here what is uh, the control condition and then we get down to our setup and I've already included the setup for you but I have to do it here so here we're going to have four test tubes and our test tube setup is going to be only bromothymol blue. Notice that again, the only thing that is changing in this experiment is the number of snails, which is why it is our independent variable. It's the thing that's changing. Everything else is going to stay the same, except in our control. And our control has nothing because we want to make sure that our bromothymol blue is not just going to turn color on its own. So we're looking for, again, this color change. All right, let's move on to our next part, which is going to be for you to type in the contents, starting color, and predicted color. So here is where you're going to type in the contents. So here you're going to have just your bromothymol blue, ATB. Begin your experiment by dragging the test tubes to the test tube racks. Drag the beaker of BTB to each test tube. Once you have filled each tube, click the arrow to advance to step four. Okay, so let's go ahead and drag our test tubes. So one, two, three, four. And what we are going to do is we're going to take some bromothymol blue. We're going to fill each of these test tubes. And note again that the color is green. So we can start off over here. We can say that the starting color for all of these is going to be green. We're going to go ahead. Snails and Elodia to the tubes according to your experimental design. If you want to clear the tubes and start again, click Clear Tubes. When your setup is complete, open the lab notebook and record your predictions. Once you have completed your prediction for each tube, click the arrow to advance to step 5. So we're going to go ahead and add our LEDA first to each one. So I'm going to take 
one sprig here according to our our control that's in test tube two and we have one sprig in test tube three and one sprig in test tube four and then we go back and we add snails so zero here so we're going to have one snail in here and we're going to have two snails one two in here so there is our our experimental design and again the bromothymol blue is green and all of this so now we have to predict what the color change is going to be so is it going to be yellow green or blue is it going to stay the same or is it going to go blue or green so again remember bromothymol blue is a carbon dioxide indicator so let's start off with the first one so the control number one is it going to stay green or is it going to turn blue or is it going to turn yellow so you just have to pick which one of those colors you want and i'm just going to put in garbage because i don't want to give you any hints okay so and I'm going to go ahead and open up my lab notebook here so I can do that. So I'm just putting in garbage here. All right, same thing for the next one. What color is it going to turn? All right, so you guys have to put a color here. So for test two, three, what color will it turn with one snail and LED? Is it going to stay green or is it going to turn blue, which means it's going to be less carbon dioxide? Or is it going to turn yellow, which means more carbon dioxide? And finally, with the last one, we have two snails and an LED. Is it going to turn blue, which means less carbon dioxide? Is it going to turn yellow, which means more carbon dioxide? So you write in your three predictions. And then we're going to go ahead and do the experiment. Double check your setup. Then click Add Stoppers to stopper the tubes. If you are testing in light conditions, drag the rack to the grow light. If you are testing in dark conditions, drag the rack to the cover. Click Start to leave the tubes for 24 hours. Once 24 hours have passed, click the arrow to advance to step 6. Observe the change in color of the BTB solution in each test tube. Open the lab notebook and record the results of your experiment. Once you have recorded your results, click the arrow to advance to step 7. So now we're going to record your results. So again, you would be doing this over here. So test tube 1, what color did it turn? And it looks like it stayed the same. Here's the bromothymol blue, here's what it looks like. So it looks like it stayed green. So you would record green in yours, I'm recording green in mine. Okay, and then the other ones, I'm going to just write in garbage, and I'm going to let you record your own stuff. So here is test tube 2, and what color did it turn? And here is test tube 3, what color did it turn? And here's test tube 4. And I guess I should help a little bit. So test tube 3, it looks like it's staying the same color. So that'd be green. And test tube 4, it looks like it got a little bit more yellowish. So it definitely got a yellowish color. So you'd be recording yellow. So you should have this completely filled out now. You are now ready to analyze your data and draw your conclusions. Open the lab notebook and answer the questions. So now we're just down to the conclusion questions. So I'll go through um, these with you real quick and um, kind of get you set up on this. And then I'll let you fill in your answers as you go. And then you'll submit this to me. So what is the relationship between snails and an elodea? So remember from our poster, what is the relationship between snails in Elodea. Who is producing the carbon dioxide? Who is sucking the carbon dioxide in? You can either mention oxygen, who is taking in the oxygen, and who is letting it out. So that would be this first one. Analyze what did the color of the bromothymol blue solution change? Or why did the color of bromothymol blue solution change? So remember, bromothymol blue is a 
CO2 indicator. So it indicates how much CO2 is in the water. So if it turned yellow, so remember, bromothymol blue is a CO2 indicator. So it indicates what, how much CO2 is in the um, water. So it started off green, which means it had a little bit of CO2 in it. And then if it turned blue, it means that CO2 was sucked out of it. If it turned yellow, it means CO2 was put into it. There's more CO2 there. So that's why we needed the, the bromothymol blue. What was the importance of a control in your experiment? Why would you conclude if the color of the solution in the control changed? So again, the control tells us if the bromothymol blue is working. It tells us if the thing that was put into the bromothymol blue caused the color change or if um, the bromothymol blue is being changed color by something completely independent that we don't know about. So the fact that the bromothymol blue did not change because it, there is no other thing making it change, the sunlight wasn't making it change, it was stopper, it's no other gas could get in there, that tells us that the color change is due specifically to the stuff that is in the test tubes. So the LED in the snails is causing the color change. And since the LED is the same in each one of these, we know that the independent variable, the snails, is the thing that is causing the color change, because that's the only thing that is different in these, is the independent variable. So the number of snails is causing this to have a change in color. Infer, when you begin, when you began the experiment, was there CO2 in the water? So you can go back and answer that. Which gas did the snails release? What observation supports this? So make sure you write down your observation that supports this based on what we learned. Based on the results of your experiment, explain why you need to add Elidea to your snail aquarium. And then based on this, you can hopefully tell me why you would need to add Elidea to your snail aquarium if it was completely sealed. Right, with that, that concludes this virtual lab. Hopefully that will clear up and give you the relationship between plants and animals in an aquarium in the CO2 and oxygen cycle. If you have any further questions, please ask me, your science teacher, and don't forget to submit this into your Canvas page.